The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? Yeah, yeah. Sit down. <laughs> Well, I think they're clapping for me. That's good. That's good. I like it. <laughs> well, John, thank you so much. Uh, I told the audience a, a day ago that um, you would think an 86-year-old man would have a few openings in his schedule, but you didn't. You, you, had, you were flying from another engagement to be here for a whole week, I hear. You're going to be here a while. Thank you for joining us. OK. <laughs> could, I, could, could I embrace this group, say deeply, it's almost like I have lived uh, sort of 56 years longing to experience what I'm feeling and what I've given those 50 six years to and being here this morning and knowing some of the pioneers uh, that you've been honoring here like the, Mr. Laterna and the Paulas and, and, uh, and Dick Haverson uh, a lot of those people embrace me uh, as somebody said, a third grade dropout. Early on, I had got an honorary degree at Wheaton College. Um, and then to be here this morning, to hear probably one of the most profound statements from the business community that embraces the church, a better yet, the church see itself as discipling them to be church members and friends and learn from each other. And of course, to be here with Amy, oh Lord, what a joy, what a ministry. And so I heard almost everything as it relates to the church, Engage, engaging people in their discipleship and understanding the church's mission is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. All of that was as clear as I ever heard in my life. And at one setting, and that makes it so wonderful this morning. Uh, what I'd like to do is is re somewhat talk about not maybe putting together um, the fullness of the gospel. I think we are gathering a holistic approach to the community. I think we're beginning to learn that. I think we begin to recognize the fact that we got to be engaged. And that all of us got to be engaged because we all have been wounded. Mm. And, and that we, as it relates to ethnicity, ought to be washing each other's back. That would be reconciliation. Because we're all so wounded. We're all so wounded. And, and our uh, racism as we know it today was made in hell by the devil. It makes too much of the wrong assumption that there are two lives. That God, when he created life, he created black life, brown life, and all of that type of life. That came later. That came to the environment where he determined our bound and our color.
and ethnicity and language came from that. But we have took race and dehumanized it, profiled it, and made it black. And we got young black people in the streets asking questions that wasn't supposed to be asked by human because that's what he created life and he created other life in order to enhance life and he said I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. That's a none question. That means that we have failed and that we are managing that kind of society. Mm -hmm. Wilberforce didn't do that. He had all the resources he needed. He said, I'm not going to manage a slave society. I'm going to change it. Right. Right. That's what has been left out. Mm. It has been left out the very purpose of the gospel, and we made it a side issue. I'm sorry. And then we're trying to do gospel ministry accommodating exactly what the gospel was assigned to destroy. And have made reconciliation a side issue mm. on the side. And reconciliation is the work of the gospel because we are broken. We are broken. That's left out. What we got to do is reclaim the whole gospel. Right. Yeah. I think we got the message. I think we've heard that. I think we've learned that. I think we've been writing books on that. <laughs> and we, we have. I'm talking about even our movement set out a whole new <coughs> industry mm -hmm. in terms of reconciliation yeah. and community development. That's what my life have been on that. That's what Amy's life have been. That's what a lot of our life have been. We got that one. We got that one. We got the method. But the information that I'm thinking from, I'm really thinking from the little book of Galatians. Why did Paul write that book? That's the message for us right now. And we understand that and practice the planning of multicultural churches in the great pain of people needs and live out that reconciliation in those communities. We are at that moment. We are at that moment. We are at this moment. This is a glorious moment in the history of the church. Wow. So, John, you... You have taken off like a rocket. Yes, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. I, I told yeah. him. I told him the reason I wanted uh, Tyler to come is for him to bring me back. And so uh, you're doing your job well. Uh, you're doing your job. But I, 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 I think at this, at this such critical moment, yeah. I think we're ready. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Well, tell it, tell it, share with them a little bit about because people for years have said, and you said this, uh, and it, it describes Christian community development and an integrated approach to even not only ministry but seeing the Bible, the whole person to the whole the whole person, the whole church to the whole community, right? The whole mission of God to the whole world. Yeah, but he's talking about what is holism, and that's the gap that we have tried to feel? That's, mm -hmm. that's a question. Yeah. What is, you might say, Christian community development? Uh, it is a, a whole church taking on a gospel of faith and work and concern about the whole humanity, uh, social, economically, political, and all of those together that enhances life and makes life better taking a whole gospel, putting back in it the piece I'm putting back in it here, the very fact that we have turned away from the gospel, 
That was the thought in Galatians. Why have you so soon turned away from the gospel, which is not a gospel, and we put a hole in the gospel? Mm -hmm. And we left out and added for that whole racial reconciliation and then dehumanized race. Made goots and niggers and, and out of that, hunkies, out of the humanity, so we could do to them what we wanted to do to them. And make them our easy slaves and exploit the human being. That's what's left out. And that's for war comings and violence in our world and competition in the wrong way in our world. And so I think that what, what has happened and what uh, holistic Christian community started to look for that when I went back to Mississippi. See, when I was converted in 1957, uh, I wasn't a Christian, but I had lived in Mississippi the first 17 years of my life. Mm -hmm. and, and you had to be over simple to believe that the white church was adequate. You had to be over simple to believe that the black church, which was created by the white church, could solve the problem. They did not create the black church to solve the problem. They created the black church in order to accommodate their enslavement and to have a place where blacks could go and worship God which is an affront to reconciliation. Do y'all follow me? Mm -hmm. The founding fathers made the greatest statement of human dignity in the history of the world. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all human beings was created equal and was endowed by their creator with certain rights, chief among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we wanted to reflect that as a kingdom in the world. One nation from all nations under God with liberty and justice for all. And a black boy laying on the ground asking a question, does my life matter? It ain't no answer when you say white life matter. You didn't hear the question. When you say all oh, lives matter, you didn't hear the question. Because we got the history here of the Civil Rights Bill. We got the history here. We got all of that here. We got all of that here. The church was created to enhance life. Amen. Oh, Lord have mercy. I, 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 I think we got to come back to the gospel. That, that, that passage Paul wrote to the Galatians, they went there and the Holy Spirit burnt through their life and brought Jews and Gentiles together, mm -hmm. tribes together. He came back there again. This time Peter's going to join them. The Jews and the Gentiles are worshiping God together. When, Peter, when the, Gentiles, the Jews come up, Peter uh, turns away and he won't eat with the Gentiles and the Jews together. And Paul said, this is the purpose of this letter. This is the purpose of this letter. You have turned away from centrality of the gospel. You have, the purpose of the gospel is to reconcile human beings to God and to each other and do that across racial and social lines. And he says that, I'm not ashamed of that gospel, mm. but it is the power of God into salvation. And you have so soon turned away from it. The black church is the expression of white oppression. There's a solution. Let me get there quickly. That's a yeah. solution. Go for it. That's, uh, this is, the solution is with Solomon's prayer. If my people, my one people, who are born into this new family, if my people, all people 
who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God said, I'll hear you from heaven and I forgive your sin and I heal them. We haven't decided that racism is sin. Well, John, you're talking to a whole group of leaders here who yes. I think should know a little bit about your model for leadership. Uh, if we are to take Return to the gospel, uh, that holistic sense of, uh, and how you see that, right, and how you've talked about that. Share with them your model of leadership from scripture and what, inf what has informed you, given your experience of racial oppression yeah. and forgiveness and reconciliation well, and now a, leading justly. That's a long story. Let me see, can I say that? <laughs> Let me see, can I say that? Uh, I think what drives me, and I get there, you can correct me, mm -hmm. uh, is my conversion and my discipleship. And I was discipled around the centrality of the gospel. I, was, I heard a Bible verse that was in a text, it was holistic, that Bible verse, it was incarnational. That's the message of the gospel. The gospel is a quick overview that's sufficient to tell you both the purpose and the meaning of itself. That's the gospel. It's the good news. Well, I was, and I heard that verse. I grew up without a mother. I grew up without a father. I grew up in a dysfunction of family without the institution of love. And my only son had invited me to a good news club. And in that good news club, I heard something, the word of God that changed my life. And that was Galatians 2.20, where Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That's the Christian message. The Christian message is the outliving of the enemy of Christ. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. What I'm trying to get us to see, our gospel got too many holes in it. And we don't turn away to another gospel. I heard the gospel it changed my life. He said, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, and of course, when I, a few years later, I was called back to Mississippi. And I was called back there in 1960. And in 1960, by 1962, Mississippi is burning. Whites are being killed. Blacks are being killed. Jews are being killed. Buried and damned. And I go back there to preach the gospel, and it's the church that's white church that is maintaining that oppression. I saw that white folks were broken, and I saw that black folks were broken, and I saw that we were broken. And it was out of that. And when I saw it really, it's when I was being tortured in a Brandon jail. I saw the ugliness of racism. But I also saw something else that night. I saw myself, because if I'd have had a, an atomic grenade, I would have pulled a plug. I would have been Samson. I saw that my reaction to their action was just as bad. Then mm -hmm. I cried to God and said, God, if you let me get out of this jail tonight, I want to preach a gospel that is stronger than my ambition, stronger than my desire for success. I want to preach a gospel that can reconcile black, whites, Jews, and Gentiles to God and to each other. That has been my mission on earth. And my principles, my, my principles then has grown out of that. Your leadership principles have My leadership yeah. principles have right. grown out of that. Right. I saw that I did like Wilberforce. I saw the, the sinfulness of racism. 
And I saw I was damaged just as bad as they was damaged. I, I think that's what we got to do. I, I think we're petting it. We're petting it. Anybody who changed society have to have an extraordinary concern about the change they want to make. And they got to be a little of that change. And they got to enter into some of the pain of that change. So they can experience it, so they can get passion. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Then it becomes redemptive. It becomes redemptive. Mm. That's what leadership is. Say that one more time, John. Yes. It's leadership leaders. is being able to see the pain yes. of others. God and to see it as God sees it. Moses, I see the pain that my people are in, and I come down to help them. But I'm gonna have to use you to go down there to be the leadership, and that you got to go enter into that pain, and then enter into that pain becomes passion. Whenever Jesus said the word passion, he pulled the pain out. When Jesus said to the woman who had been sick all the year, he said, passion went out of me. Who touched me? Uh -huh. Leadership is redemptiveness. It, it, and it's, in the end, the glory don't go to the leader. In the end, the glory go to the land. Mm. The glory go to the land. Any other, any other big thing about the leader is secondary. The, the leader success is the qualitative growth of the people they lead in the world. We're at that moment. I think we're at a moment. I, I, I can't. This is the day that I think I was called to be. I was discipled by the, many of these businessmen that were the pioneers. Dick Havison used to be my chauffeur in Washington. You, you get the idea? You get the idea? <laughs> if we don't do reconciliation now, our nation have had its chance. Wow. And I don't see the political structure with the hate of each other. I don't see them uh, pulling any virtue or putting any virtue into society. We're going to get the less of the person that money can buy to be the president. Wow. And I think we also might be darkening the evangelical movement. I think we might be darkening that. I don't think the millennium generation is going to buy into President's undecipled. That in my community, the black young millennium, when the Rodney King ride and, and the O.J. Simpson ride, the churches out there that was had a thousand and two thousand people in it, they got two hundred and a hundred in the black community. In our society. Because our young folks are turned about, turned away from them. They're in the streets saying, uh, crying out, uh, does black lives matter? And white folks are saying, white folks' lives matters too. You didn't hear the question. Amen. <laughs> All life matters too. You didn't hear the question. Amen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so, so the question, yeah. what is right. Christian community development? It had this meaning beginning in what we call the three R's of development. Three R's of development. First one, relocation, that's incarnation. That's going to the people and living among them, loving them, planning with them, starting with what they know. Belong, that's relocation, that's incarnation. Jesus came down to our earth. And he liberated us because he came and gave a life for us. Greater love than no one did. 
That's relocation. Reconciliation is the purpose of the gospel. Lord have mercy, I'm not going to no more reconciliation meet. <laughs> <laughs> because we have pulled it out of the gospel. Mm. We need to put it back into the gospel as the purpose of the gospel. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and had made us ambassadors of reconciliation. That's who we are. What are you talking about? I, I don't know whether or not you hear what I'm saying. This is an issue of clarifying the gospel. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be to all people. All people. All people. For unto you is born this night in the city of David a Savior. Hmm who is Christ the Lord. Lord, what a message. What's the gospel? I can see Paul saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I, I, I can hear her he's saying, for, for the preaching of the cross are to them that perish foolishness. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God. Yeah. Now, we got to be that. That's what I heard this morning. I heard that as clear as I ever heard it before in my life. Wherever we find ourselves, whatever God has gifted us to do, if it's to make Toyotas or to make Fords or to make Krispy Kreme and our donuts and all of that, whatever that is, we are Christians there. Yes. We are his witnesses there. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay. And, and, then, and then the third R, the third R, is redistribution, yeah. relocation, reconciliation, redistribution. We are going to have a time after this at 1 o'clock to be able to sit with you and go in detail even more than what we've done right now. I, you brought your books out. I want to give you a, a 30 seconds to oh, oh, tell the folks that you brought your books. This one reflects the holism that we got to return back to, the, uh, uh, making neighborhoods whole. You, you know, and, and boy, I think that we got to go back to those churches with a sense, go back to our community with a sense of urgency to plant these churches within these neighborhoods. The, the old church won't be able to do it. Some of those suburbia churches, some of those near suburbia churches, they are doing it. But the old church in that neighborhood, it, it, it'll be an exception if they do it. And I it, think we need to go back there. You That's, brought, you brought and, it. And we always talk about trying to get justice and freedom. We don't talk about practicing great justice and freedom. So this book is about leaders that practice justice and freedom by what you live. And of course, most people know that this is the leadership book in the world. Right now, it's powerful in Korea and in the Korean church. It's been translated in the Korean language. And so let this justice is let justice down. roll down. These are the books. Y'all, I'm, I'm sorry that I burden you with so much emotion. But I, 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 I really think, I really think we're at the, it seems like as I read the Bible, it seems like as we get closer to the thought, and we should always be thinking that God is coming tomorrow. Right. Coming tomorrow. That's the idea, is to help keep us focus yeah. on the mission. Wow. So, but does it look like the biblical idea that there's going to be a gathering and a rush? It looked like they called it to 144,000, but I think that's just a metric. Right. Mm. I think that because he says it's a number that no man can number. You can number 144,000. His number. And when you see him under the throne, it's like, who are these? These are a group that no man can number. And, and they from every language, yes. every ethnic group, every tongue, from one race, one race. Amen. They are one. 
right. the, uh, the Mexican immigrants, That's right. the illegals. That's right. What are you talking about? That's a side issue. Mm. That's a side issue. We made a commitment to the immigrants. This is an immigrant nation. Are we fools? <laughs> we made that in our covenant. Give me your poor white folks. Give me your black white folks. The stack white folks. Let's take that off. Let's take that. Give me your poor. Yes. Give me your flying. Let's come here and together we become that city sitting on a hill. Amen. We become that shining city. We're reflecting that city that's coming down from God out of heaven. That's what made Pilgrim Progress such a great. He never took his eyes off the prize. Wow. He did not let the side issues stop him from moving toward that city. We got a chance, folks. We got a chance. Well, what went on here this morning have not went on before at meet that, and not had went on in a collective where we can hear it. John, you have to stop. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. Join me in. Uh, I remember. I remember this the rest of my life. <laughs> I said, Tyler is the only one that could handle me. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay.